A warm welcome to today's talk, the end of June 2022. Now, there's a lot of debate going on at the moment about the nature of human life, when human life begins, in light of the recent uh, abortion law changes in the United States. So uh, I'm not going to get involved in that debate, but I want to talk about fetal development so we can inform this with a bit of science. And there's some fascinating pictures I've been able to obtain. So if you want that uh, fetal development, then stick around. If not, uh, tune back into the next video. But let's go straight on to the first slide, assuming you do want to watch. Uh, here we have, of course, the uh, one of several hundred million sperm that dad produces. Here we have mum's uh, ovum, 23 chromosomes from the sperm, 23 chromosomes from the ovum. And they fuse together in this process called fertilization. And at that point, when I was, that forms a cell called a zygote. At that point, when I was a zygote, all of the genetics that is in me now, all of the potential that's in me now was already there. So we start off as one single cell. You started off as one cell. I started off as one cell. Quite amazing, but uh, scientifically undeniable. So within just a few hours of fertilization occurring, the single cell, the zygote, starts to divide first into two, then into four, then into larger clusters of cells. This is the process that's actually called cleavage, the production of larger numbers of cells. And of course, um, if two ovum were fertilized, that will give rise to uh, non-identical twins. And if just one zygote is fertilized, but that after cleavage physically separates, then of course that will result in identical or monozygotic twins. So um, as we see from those pictures there, that's four cell stage. That looks like it's about an eight or 12, 16 uh, cell stage. So if fertilization is going to occur, typically it's high in the uterine tube, what we used to call the fallopian tubes. And then the cilia, these hair-like structures protruding out from the wall of the fallopian tube that waft it down towards the body of the uterus. And when it gets to the body of the uterus, it implants into the inner lining of the uterus, the endometrium, typically about six days after ovulation. And we see that stage in this picture here. This is called a blastocyst now. So there's a layer of cells around the outside. Then there's a bundle of cells in here. And then this is a fluid filled uh, cyst. And implantation is normally six days after the uh, fertilization event. So here we see the embryo at four weeks after conception. So we can see the head the eye structure already beginning to form. These are the limb buds. These will become the limbs. You can see the vertebrae, the spinal column down there. And this is the formation of the heart here in the early thoracic cavity. And this, of course, is the umbilical cord connecting it to the placenta. So at this stage, all of the tissues are essentially present. There's been this process called differentiation where the simple tissues of the early embryo become specialized. So we have connective tissue and epithelial tissue and neural tissue. In fact, at this stage, we have a neural tube, which will become the central nervous system, developing the structures that will form the face and the neck up here. These are called the pharyngeal structures that we see there, those finger-like projections. The heart and blood vessels continue to develop. The lung, stomach and liver start to develop as well. So there'll be early liver uh, formation in there. And a home pregnancy test would now show that um, you have become positive for, for uh, pregnancy. The, the, the presence of human chorionic gonadotrophin. Well, here we see the developing embryo at five weeks. We can see the limb bud, so this will become the legs. This will become the arms. We can see that the eye socket is around. The early eyes are already starting to form. And we can see a fairly uh, complicated brain structure already present. So quite a lot of recognizable anatomical features. And blood cells are now actually being produced within the embryo itself. So it's producing its own blood now. And early cardiac contractions are visible. Obviously, you can't see it on this because it's a stills picture but early cardiac uh, contractions are visible uh, from three weeks after fertilization as early as three weeks and the neural tube is now closed to allow the development of the brain and the uh, spinal cord now uh, 
Tragically, this picture is actually uh, what we call a tubal pregnancy, an ectopic pregnancy. Uh, we do see this quite commonly in emergency situations, unfortunately, where the pregnancy started de developing in the, uh, the uterine tube. It's completely non-viable. It, it, can't, it can't be sustained. There's a risk that it will uh, perforate the uterine tube and, and basically kill the mother. So this section of uterine tube is normally resected. And of course, that results in the death of the embryo in this case. So um, quite sad, well, very sad, uh, tragic, but a but, uh, useful uh, picture to allow high resolution photography in that, in that situation. Now, this is another one. This is quite sad. This is a spontaneous abortion at six weeks. But we can see that the limb buds are starting to develop into limbs here, legs. Uh, this is part of the umbilical cord. Uh, the eyes, the mouth, the ears, the start of the nose. So that was a spontaneous abortion um, at six weeks. And spontaneous abortions, of course, uh, do do happen for reasons we often don't understand, but, but it's not an uncommon uh, event, unfortunately. And at this stage, just seven weeks after conception, it's really starting to look quite human in my view. We can count the fingers. The fingers are now differentiated. We still see the heart showing through the uh, thoracic wall, but the ears, the eyes, the umbilical cord. And of course, we can see the feet there with the beginning of the differentiation of the toes. Now, this is eight weeks here. So at eight weeks, we can see the three vessels in the umbilical cord. It's got one vein and two arteries. The heart now has uh, four contracting chambers. And we can't see it on here, but the, the external genitalia are visible if you get the right position to look on it. The fingers and toes grow longer and become more distinct. Uh, eyelids and ears are forming and you can see the tip of the nose. Not clearly there, but you can see it on other pictures. The arms and the legs are lengthening now. They're getting longer, more limb-like. So this is actually the end of what we would call the embryonic phase. And organogenesis is now complete. Now, organogenesis is the formation of the organs. So my brain, heart, lungs, liver, spleen, stomach, intestine, kidney, all the major organs are now formed just eight weeks after conception. Now they just need time to grow. And this eight weeks is the end of the embryonic period. And uh, week nine is the beginning of what we would call the fetal period. But organogenesis already complete, even at this very early stage in development. So again, this picture was taken at eight weeks, the end of the embryonic period and the beginning of the fetal period. I don't know why we were able to take this picture, but clearly the, uh, th this embryo early fetus uh, did not survive, unfortunately. OK, so now I have a really difficult question for you. Here we have the quiz. Um, what sort of late embryo early fetus is this? <laughs> and of course, so obviously an elephant. See, clearly see the, uh, the trunk uh, developing. So quite amazing that we get this in, in other species as well. So this slide is the fetus at 12 weeks of development clearly see the fingers with the, uh, the blood vessels in them there at 12 weeks. And at 12 weeks, um, we start getting spontaneous movements. So the fetus will start spontaneously moving around and the top of the uterus can be palpated, can be felt above the mother's pubic bone. In fact, the elbows and knees have actually been bending since uh, 10 weeks, since a couple of weeks before this picture. Heartbeat can now be heard externally when the doctor or the midwife examines the uh, the mother and the unborn child and the sex organs should start to become clear as well at around about 12 weeks so this is 16 weeks after fertilization we can see the umbilical cord in the background well formed ear nose mouth eyes all the, uh, the fingers at 16 weeks. And mum can feel the top of the uterus about three inches below a, a belly button at this stage. And the baby's eyes can blink and the heart and blood vessels are now fully formed with the circulation of the blood. Obviously, you can see that going through these blood vessels. 
and the baby's fingers and toes now have uh, fingerprints. So quite amazing that our individuality in terms of fingerprints is present from 16 weeks after fertilisation. Now you probably recognise this famous picture of the, the unborn child at 20 weeks <laughs> sucking, its, uh, sucking its thumb. So development at 20 weeks, between 17 and 20 weeks gestation, the thalmocortical relays penetrate the cortex. What am I talking about? Well, the thalamus is in the inner part of the brain, the cortex is in the outer part of the brain, and those tracks are complete. Now, pain is essentially generated in the thalamus, representing injury to part of the body. And there's tracks from the thalamus where pains are generated that go to the cortex on the outer part of the brain, which appropriate that pain to particular parts of the body. That's how we know when we hurt our uh, hand or our foot, we can tell the difference. And those tracks are there at 20 weeks, as we see in this, in this picture here, as early as 20 weeks. And a couple of weeks before that, um, even from week 18, there's quite a strong stress hormone response if, if, the, uh, if the unborn child is, is, is manipulated or uh, prodded with uh, medical instruments, for example. We get this stress hormone response, exactly the same as we do. If I inflicted pain on you for a period of time, your cortisol levels and your adrenaline levels would become grossly elevated. So to me, this is pretty conclusive evidence that pain can be experienced from 18 to 20 weeks after uh, the, the, the process of fertilization has taken place. Um, big stress hormone response from, from 18 weeks, as we said. The uterus is now at the level of the, the belly button. The baby can suck a thumb, <laughs> yawn, stretch and make faces. And of course, mother can feel the baby moving around quite a bit now. This, this process is sometimes called quickening. The baby's been moving for a while, but then the mum can really feel it at this stage of course that you'll know if you've been a pregnant mum or you've uh, lived with a pregnant mum you, you'll be well aware that uh, that has been uh, re reported so by 20 weeks gestation baby will respond to sounds if there's loud sounds the baby will jump and the baby will move the face will wince and uh, the uh, the baby will recoil from sharp uh, objects and uh, incisions so pretty strong evidence there that from 18 to 20 weeks pain can be experienced even even slightly before the start of my career in in, in the in my career started in I, I was a psychiatric nurse in 75 and a general nurse in 80 and have done many jobs since then but uh, slightly before then in the 60s it was believed that children couldn't feel pain and horrendous procedures were carried out on them in the belief that children couldn't feel pain. Now we know that pain goes back to 18 to 20 weeks gestation. Indeed, if not, if not uh, earlier. So a uh, great picture there of the, the baby sucking is, uh, don't know if it's a his or a her thumb actually on that one. Now, of course, we've had two dimensional ultrasound scans for quite a long time. Now we also have uh, three dimensional ultrasound scans, which gives rise to huge amounts more meaningful information so here for example we see we're we looking at a gentle smile there I would say probably at 24 weeks and at 24 weeks as we said baby responds to sound by moving around or increasing its uh, pulse rate and mum can notice uh, jerking movement sometimes when the the, uh, the the baby is hiccuping and with the inner ear now uh, fully developed the the inner part of the ear responsible for balance the, may, the baby may be able to sense which way uh, up he is in he or her is within the within the uterus. So this next slide is 28 weeks, and at 28, 30 weeks, in fact, the, for the rest of the pregnancy, really, the, the the baby sleeps most of the time, and there's a clear sleep and wake cycle from about 30 weeks after fertilisation, and there's active, rapid eye movement sleep. So the child alternates between rapid eye movement sleep, which can be seen and detected, and uh, non-rapid eye movement sleep, which is a deeper sleep associated with a, 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 
less, less movement that the baby seems more relaxed during those periods of time. Of course, the rapid eye movement sleep is when we dream. So the evidence now, and I've given you some evidence in the literature, indicating quite strongly that from uh, 28, 29, 30 weeks that the child is uh, dreaming. Uh, quite what they dream about, of course, I don't think we'll ever know, but interesting to know that we do have dreams from this stage in, in development, really quite earlier on than most people would think. So here we see the late fetus from 36 weeks. Uh, the lungs are fully developed, the brain is still growing uh, rapidly, but growing very rapidly at this stage. The head's usually positioned down in the pelvis by now, ready for birth. Now, an early term baby, we would say, is one born at 37 to 39 weeks. Um, a term baby, normally born at 39 to 40 weeks. And uh, a slightly late term baby at uh, 41 to 42 weeks gestation. Now, this, this next picture is one of my favourites here. If we have it there, <laughs> this is the uh, this is at 40 weeks, and you can clearly see the baby's giving mum a bit of a bit of a kicking there. We see the footprint inside the uh, from the abdominal wall through the uterus, and here we see the fully developed uh, full term child at 40 weeks um, after fertilisation. And this final picture I think I've got here is. Um, and one more after this, so that's uh, that's baby's now arrived, and uh, here we have a healthy newborn term baby. Uh, its uh, birth weight is typically three point five kilograms. Will be a healthy weight, about seven point seven pounds. Head circumference thirty five centimeters, and about half a meter in length, and uh, that's a public domain picture thanks to the parents for sharing that so hopefully that puts a bit of um, science on onto this debate uh, I, I'm going to talk about me um, I, I believe I came into existence when my father's sperm fertilized my mum's ovum because that zygote was me and clearly that wasn't just a zygote it was a human zygote happened to be my human zygote and just time uh, and, uh, and now unfortunately deterioration has gone from that single cell stage up to me at the moment. So hopefully there's some interesting uh, science there for us to think about and thank you for watching.